Hey everybody, welcome back to Bleeding Cool's Day 2 and Best in Show wrap-up of the 2018 Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. This guy right here, Ray Fluck, television beat writer. And first off, let me start off by congratulating our Best in Show winner, Flynn, the Bichon Frise, and also the Reserve Best in Show, uh, Ty the Giant Schnauzer. Uh, for those of you, in, I guess, in beauty pageant terms, Reserve Best in Show is, I guess, if Flynn cannot meet the contractual obligations of being Best in Show, then Ty would step in for, I, I, don't, I don't know how that happens. I, I, I can only think of one way, and I just don't want to start on a Debbie Downer note, so I'm not going to go there. Um... I thought it was a great competition, just overall. Um, having said that, none of the three that I wanted to win won, so I, I don't know what that says about uh, my selection process because I was all in for um, uh, Bean, uh, Bean, Biggie, and Winston. Uh, Biggie, I thought, uh, Bean, I thought won over the crowd. Biggie, I think, had had it since yesterday. Um, I don't, I don't know. I've always wondered this thing about you know, does crowd reaction being the big huge fan favorite does that work against you? Um, you know, from the judging standpoint, because it, it can never tell. You know, is there is there this need on the judge's standpoint to show? Well, you think you know, while well, I know it's not just. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, but again, congratulations. I mean, it's tough to. to I mean, you can't s talk a dog show winner. I mean, it's not like it's the NFL or NBA or anything like that. Um, so congratulations to to everybody involved. Hopefully, everybody gets just like some gold plated like raw chew toys and everything. Well, not really gold plated because it hurt their teeth, but I think. Yeah, you know where I'm going with that. Um, but like I said, uh, we're going to be starting off with give you a quick recap and our thoughts on how day two went. Uh, first and foremost, let me start off on a bit of a Debbie Downer note. Uh, to, to Fox Sports 1 and to Westminster Kennel Club, I know how the business runs. I know you're selling advertising and things like that. But there really was no excuse for the show to go as late as it went last night. You're saying 8 to 11. It was really starting on a good clip. And next thing you know, it's after 11.35 and the show's still going on. So... I, again, I know it's commercial time and, and, and the amount of money you're making off that. I mean, I'm sure Isle of Dogs paid a, a pretty punny, penny. Um, the Black Panther ad seemed to be on during every commercial break. You have major, major corporations, so I do get it. Um, but yeah, just try to, if even just 10, 15 minutes just to rein in a little bit. But having said that, what we had last night is we had sporting, working, and terror groups and our best in show. Uh, we're going to start off on some of my handy-dandy notes, as you can see here. Again, having nothing to do with Laura or Amazon. Just so happens to give a really cool free freebie when I was at Comic Con, but again, I digress. Let me start off by a joke that I'm going to keep beating to death, but I do I do have some issue with the fact that apparently, from what I'm reading online, that Fox Sports One didn't cut to any of the dogs that were taking a paw in protest. So I don't know, I'm just trampling on their First Amendment dog rights. So I think I have a bit of an issue with that. I mean, honestly, I love that joke. I'm, I'm just a big fan of it. I'm, it's probably the last time I'm going to get to use it. So uh, yeah, I love it. Um, uh, Reese. Uh, it, it, it it was the uh, it, it there was this thing, really cute moment where they you had the idea where the dog whether the dog was the, being handled by the handler or the 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 handlers being handled by the dog but there was this uncomfortable moment where it kind of did this thing with Reese's face that I particularly like and look I'm a layman I know I'm sure it doesn't hurt I'm sure it's part of the process and everything like that it just I don't know just kind of looked kind of crappy I kind of didn't feel completely comfortable with that one. Um, the breed names, I, I, I've come to the conclusion, besides just their, their sole effort is to try to give me a hard time with my spelling, I also feel like it's those things you see on Facebook where it's like, hey, take the first letter of your name, the first letter of your last name, the first, and you can come up with like your superhero name or the museum you're going to be working at or something like that because they're just, it was flying at every direction. And yeah, spelling, oof, I got I to gotta start working on that. Um, the, uh, the Boykin. Fun to say. I mean, what else can you say besides that? I don't think there's anything else to say besides that. Um, there was a writer, it was a, a Cocker Spaniel, c Party Color, who I listed, and I'm going to say it. It reminded me of the dog that Sia would have. Um, and if you don't know who Sia is, I posted the video. Check, Look up the greatest, because that's just one of those, like, you, you could be in a down mood or anything, and just that just sounds fantastic. But I am, I'm, 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 I'm yet again di digressing. Um, the Chuckles Hut in Poughkeepsie, very funny uh, reference by Chris Myers. Um, that was actually pretty cute. I like that. Um, the four wheel drive of hunting dogs is a really weird way to reference a hunting dog. I'm just not, that kind of was odd. Um, also, again, big props to Shannon Sharp uh, across all boards. He just was really into this from the very beginning. And I apologize because I saw NFL star and I thought, okay, he's going through the motions of this just to kind of get his acting, not his acting, but his announcing chops in to get some experience. That piece he did on the rescue dogs I thought was really fantastic. And if you haven't had a chance to see it, uh, check it out on YouTube. It really, really was good. Um, 
a little fact, I didn't know that Helen Keller was responsible for bringing Nikitas to the United States. I thought that was really fascinating. Um, Ringo, the black Russian terrier. Uh, I, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. It didn't look like a dog. It, it looked like a it looked like a like a small person inside of some weird like kind of like I guess like Batman Tim Burton type costume dog costume. You're think about it for a second. You're gonna you're gonna know what I'm getting at. That might be a little vague, but apologize in advance. But I think you know what I'm getting at. Um, hmm, let's see what else. Uh, Gail, uh, yeah, Gail did something really good. She, she rhymed slay with sway. It was cute. It was it, everything like that. Uh, I, I need Jason and Chris to not act like she's like Kendrick Lamar or Eminem with like just incredible lyric skills. It was a little, I was like, wow, there, everybody's starting to get a little punchy at this point. Um, Finn, uh, the Mastiff, there was a great moment where it was just like, they was doing the whole treat thing and Finn was just kind of almost one of those like, you give me another one or I'm not going anywhere. And it's going to look embarrassing for all of us. But it looked like it actually played through. But it was pretty cute, actually. I like how that played out. Um, right? I'm sure it's counting. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. It sounded like Jason H. was throwing a little shade to what his, what his announcing partner was talking about. Um, it wasn't too loud or anything like that. I don't know if it was the punchiness of the night or what. But it just it was like, yeah, whatever. Like, whatever you're talking about. I'm, I'm a judge. What do you know, Chris? You just, you're just an announcer. I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe we start getting ready to wrap this up now. Um... I didn't know there was a dog walking app. During commercials, you actually learn something, and it's like weird um, because you, it's not just a matter of getting a dog walker or anything like that, but you track the dogs walking, its poop rate, things like. Yeah, I gotta be honest, with you, it's the things. The more, the more you know, you know. Um, Chris uh, Myers doing a Marv Albert impersonation without actually naming Marv Albert. I knew that because being New Yorker or New York area person, uh, but I was like, okay, yeah, okay. Again, probably probably to feel too comfortable mentioning Marv Albert, if you know what I mean. Um, there, there was also I was if it was Jay's I don't know who it was, but there was a really funny moment where they were talking about Mary Tyler Moore and Bruce Lee. But the way the person said it and their awkward pausing and not pausing, it sounded like they were saying Mary Tyler Moore, martial arts master. I was like, oh crap! I didn't know that about Mary Tyler Moore. Wow, no wonder she could have put up with Lou Grant for that long. Not many people are going to get that reference. I completely understand that. Um, smooth, broken, and rough. Uh, the joke was, you should leave that accounting firm. I'm going to be honest with you. At that moment, there was four jokes that I had ready to go. Four of them. We don't know how many of those jokes would be appropriate for me to put out in the middle of a dog show. None of them. That's why you didn't see those. That's why I just put a transcript. You're letting you peek behind the curtain like the Wizard of Oz, folks. Um, Miss, uh, oh God, yeah. Miss Denmark, the, um... Yeah, i got to make sure my own handwriting sucks sometimes. Uh, the one thing I want to say on that is finally, like, Miss Denmark, the judge, had that very cool Miss Marple, Jessica Fletcher, Murder, She Wrote vibe going on. Like, again, it was like one of those things where, like, she could just verbally shred you to pieces, but you wouldn't mind. It would actually be kind of enjoyable because she would do it so beautifully with a smile on her face, and she'd probably make you, like, some hot cocoa after, so it would be kind of cool. Um, I could further elaborate on that, but that probably would require a couple more sessions of therapy. Um, so that's it, folks. Hey, guys, thank you for joining me. Um, this was a great first run for Bleeding Cool. We're very, very excited about it. Hopefully, and this is a message to you, Westminster Kettle Club, we love to cover your event at Madison Square Garden next year live. So please keep us in mind because we really enjoy doing it. We're going to be doing some more of these type of events and events outside the pop culture beaten path over the next year. So please keep an eye out for it. But thank you guys for joining me. Again, this guy here, Ray Fluke, television beat writer for Bleeding Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you on the website bleedingcool.com. Take care, folks.